Welcome back to the Haven Homestead Podcast, where we learn and grow together on our way to living more sustainable lives. My name is Chris, and today we are on episode 17, and we're going to be talking about rabbits. Uh, Lindsay made a PDF a long time ago, a couple years ago I think it was, on why rabbits, why to raise rabbits or, or uh, not to rabbit. That is the question, to rabbit or not to rabbit? That is the question that we're going to be covering today. You can find this PDF on our website as a free download uh, at havenhomestead.com. That's havenhomestead.com. Also, please consider supporting us on Patreon. That's at p-a-t-r-e-o-n patreon.com slash havenhomestead. And there you'll find our site with uh, some posts that we've done there. And we really uh, depend on the support for uh, keeping the show going and paying for the subscriptions and and uh, getting everything done that needs to be done for the show. So with that housekeeping done, we'll get right into why rabbits. So this worksheet, I'm going to kind of read it a little bit, but also, also paraphrase some of the things that Lindsay ha- has on here. And the purpose behind the Why Rabbits PDF is to help people understand if they want to raise rabbits or not. Because getting rabbits, any any animal that depends on you for their lives is a responsibility and not to be taken lightly. She took some of the stuff from my rabbit class we, we teach. So here at Haven Homestead we teach classes for Centralia College. In the continuing education section, uh, we have classes on raising and butchering chickens, or processing, if you prefer, uh, raising and butchering rabbits, unique gardening methods. We were tried to do an intro to permaculture class, but that didn't turn out for some reason or another. And we have more classes that we want to add. Lindsay also teaches some classes on photography and. Uh, photo restoration and and writing, publishing your own books, that sort of thing. So, in our rabbit class, I had a section called "To Rabbit or Not to Rabbit," and that is what she took. She took that section and ran with it and made a whole PDF on on this uh, the subject. So, on chapter two of her the little PDF, it's the little. They're kind of cut into parts, and the chapters are only a few paragraphs each, but uh, here in chapter two, it says, Discovering Your Purpose. So, raising, we're going to be talking about raising meat rabbits, and there are two kinds of rabbits that are out there. There are, well, there are a few kinds, actually. Uh, it says two in here, but there's a, there's a few kinds. One are pet rabbits, another is fiber rabbits, another is show rabbits. And the one we're going to be talking about today is meat rabbits. And each has their own reason for living. And depending on what you want. So you have to really analyze what your purpose is. If you want to... If you like, really like to spin your own yarn and knit or crochet or whatever it is that... Whichever one people like to do to make their own clothing... Then you could get an Angora rabbit. They are a fiber rabbit, or a few Angora rabbits. And the thing about those is you have to brush them, and you have to keep them clean. They're so fluffy and fuzzy that their their fiber, their hair, can pick up dirt really easily because of how just how fluffy and, and soft they are. So they take daily brushing, and then when you brush them out, the hair comes out, in just as anybody, like when you brush your hair, there's going to be some hair in the brush. Uh, with the rabbits, when you, when they get brushed, hair will come out, and you collect that hair out of the brush and spin that into angora fiber or angora thread. Or I'm not, as you can tell, a person that spins, so I don't know all the all the lingo. I'm not up to date with the jargon. So one thing that some people might get that might uh, keep them from raising rabbits is the thought of half, of needing to butcher them. And with Angora rabbits, you don't have to worry about butchering anything because you want to keep them alive 
as long as possible to get that fiber from them. Pet rabbits, they are rabbits that you just keep, you know, and they can, they can help you, uh, if you have, uh, anxiety or something like that, because they're very soft, so you can pet them, and, and they can be trained to use a litter box. They are pretty decent pets. They do smell, and they do uh, chew on things because they're a rodent after all. Thinking of keeping those for pets, it's kind of a... It's, it's for some people. They don't have to worry about butchering them because they're going to keep them around as their pet. Then there we have show rabbits. Show rabbits are the kind that are certain certain breeds, and the body is a certain shape, and if your rabbits are the form that the judges are looking for with the right kind of pelt and the right kind of face and ears and whatever else that they look for, then you can make money through showing your rabbits. And then, of course, when you go to sell them, they are worth much more if they have ribbons and some sort of, you know, awards behind them. So that's another way you can you can uh, turn your rabbits into cash is by showing them. Now, the rabbits that we do here are total utilitarian sort of use, and that is for meat and pelts and fertilizer. So that's mostly what we're going to be that's what we're going to be talking about today is the meat rabbits. So why do you want to raise the rabbits is an important question to ask yourself. Uh, we've kind of just covered that as to what your what your purpose is, but uh, what what do you want to get out of them? And then you'll know what uh, breeds to get. So some of the main breeds that are around uh, are you, you can get a heritage or you can get a hybrid, and there are some that are really big. They take more to take longer to get bigger, and they uh, eat more food from. Um, what I gather, like the Flemish Giants, for instance. But there's also the New Zealand White or the Californian are common meat rabbits. They're white, or the Californian have the brown noses. As far as I, if I remember correctly, they have the brown nose and the brown ears, but the rest of them are white. And they are known for growing up fast so that you can butcher them sooner. That's their... their uh, food to meat conversion is really good and they're a hybrid that a lot of people use for meat rabbits also they're white and so you won't be able to see the hair if it gets on the meat during the butchering so that you won't notice the hair as easily as if you had a darker colored rabbit we really like the silver fox that's one that i'd like to get into we bought three silver fox rabbits and they were from uh, somebody who showed them for years, and they were all they're all older, a few years old, you know, three or four years old each, and I don't think they'd ever been bred, and so we tried to breed them, and they just weren't uh, cutting the mustard. The one female she did breed, but and she did have a litter, but she killed them all. So that's one thing when you're when you're thinking about. Uh, the first time it seems like their first litter. I was talking to another rabbit breeder at the local auction, the local poultry auction, and he was saying that uh, it's common when they have their first litter to uh, have them on the wire, not in the nesting box. Just you know, have the babies on the on the pen, but the the bottom of the pen or the cage rather, and that usually means you'll lose that litter if you don't catch them in time because they like to they like to give birth which is called kindling they like to kindle uh at the in the nighttime or early early morning so by the time you go out there to check on them uh, the babies are already too cold and, and have died so but by the second time around it seems like our rabbits we have three breeding does right now the males are called bucks and the females are called does just like deer and uh, we have three females right now, and all of them lost their first litters, but they've all done well on the litters after that. They've all made the nest right and had the babies in there in the nesting box. And right now we have about 20 baby rabbits that are growing up for 
either for selling or for butchering. And then also when we teach our classes, um, we ha use them as demonstration for the class to be able to butcher and stuff. So they have their purpose, and their purpose is to feed us and uh, others. So if you're going to... Oh, so a couple other breeds. Um, so the silver fox, what we liked, and we want to get try more silver foxes. I think that the reason the R's didn't work out were they were just a little bit too old. Uh, and that they hadn't been bred before and they weren't, you know, tried in true mothers, uh, proven mothers and a proven buck. The buck, he seemed to not uh, know his business, so I never got any, any uh, kits out of him. Just a couple of the breeds, Angora, like I talked about, are fiber rabbits, and they're super fluffy. There's Rex, which have kind of a velvety hide. You can get uh, Rex rabbits that are, we had one that was really th uh, short fur and really close together, and she was, it was really, really soft, and she was our best mom. We had her for years, and she gave us a lot of baby rabbits. And then there's also the giant breeds like the Flemish Giants, for instance, and there's the Lops. They have the ears that hang down. And then the lion head, which are, they're kind of a smaller rabbit, and they have a really poofy head. So that's that. Those are just a few of the breeds. I mean, there's lots of breeds, and some people like, I was talk, talking to the guy at the poultry auction, and his wife liked stuff that I have no interest, you know, and it's most, we're all about rabbits, or about meat rabbits, and the, the silver fox, the reason why we really like them is they're an American breed, they're a heritage breed, they have light bones so that they're, there's more meat, so if you have a five pound rabbit, you're going to have more of that is meat than if you had another rabbit that had heavier bones, you get the same five pound carcass and you'll have uh, less meat you know more of it more of that weight will be bones so when you're considering whether you want to get rabbits realize that rabbits are work and it takes effort to keep them alive and uh, to uh, raise them up healthy and happy so in our handout there's a chart on on raising rabbits and if you want you can add your own pros and cons uh, in the section, you, or your own to rabbit or not to rabbit sections, if you feel like there's some other things that you'd like to add to that. So, in here, Lindsay put in six questions. The first thing you should, uh, you should ask yourself are, who will be doing the work? Where will you be keeping them? What products do you want from your rabbits? Fiber, meat, money, or some combination? Does the butchering process worry you? Do you need to get permission from your city or neighbors before you keep rabbits? And the last question, do you have time to spend with your rabbits regularly? We'll just go over these chart options uh, quickly, and you can decide whether to rabbit or not to rabbit, and then you add it up at the end. So once again, you can find these this PDF at our website, havenhomestead.com. So the first characteristic she puts down here is fertilizer, so as a byproduct. One of the greatest uses of any type of rabbit is the use of rabbit excrement on your garden. It's a cold fertilizer, which means it can be used without aging. So cold is like you can get fresh rabbit manure and put it around your fruit tree. Now, if you got a couple shovelfuls of fresh chicken manure and put it around your fruit tree, you could kill the fruit tree because of how strong the nitrogen is in chicken poop. It's, it's considered a hot, a hot manure or a hot uh, compost. Rabbit droppings are considered a cold compost or cold uh, fertilizer so you can add them right to your garden and it won't hurt them so do you want fertilizer rabbit or not to rabbit we want fertilizer so we're going to do to rabbit she says but they poop a lot you'll need to have some sort of poop catching and distributing system in place to keep up with their droppings and keep the rabbit hutches clean so are are you willing to make a rabbit poop catching system what we did is we got totes that were about the right width to put under the rabbit cages and just slide totes in there and when the totes are full of rabbit manure we slide the totes out they have handles on them we grab them you know put a glove on because the rabbits pee all around in there so this, the handles are usually soiled and you can grab the the handle pull it out 
uh, dump it into a wheelbarrow that you can take out to the orchard or take out to the garden or or uh, you know whatever you want maybe set out in the sun and and let dry so that you can bag it and sell it I don't whatever you want to do that that's it but that is a money a uh, lot some people sell rabbit manure and it's uh, expensive that's one byproduct we could that we we like so I'm also going to put that on on two rabbit I'll mark the two rabbit section on that one okay meat meat rabbit is or rabbit meat rather is a white mild tasting meat that is comparable to chicken it's delicious the trouble is you will have to be comfortable with the whole butchering process and I don't have any issues with the butchering process. We raise our rabbits with that in mind, and the kids know that that's going to happen. And when we go out there to butchery, we say, "Thanks, thanks, rabbit. You're you're a good rabbit, and and you did a did a good job. And thanks for making us some good, delicious meat." And and uh, we try to be very respectful over it. So meat is not a problem, and and uh, so it's going to be two rabbit pelts or fiber, depending on the type of rabbit you raise. You will need to know how to take care of the hairy bits of your rabbit accordingly. Is raising fiber rabbits worth the work? What will you do with your pelts once you've harvested the meat? So what we do after we skin the rabbits is we put them into... We keep the skins together and we put that into a gallon size bag. Then after we have the gallon size bag full of rabbit hides, I do about 12 hides in a batch. Then I'll go out and I'll tan them. And the tanning is a pretty easy process, but that's what we do when we tan the hides and use them for craft things and, and making things. The next section you can look at is uh, rabbits are a great way to feel happy. So it's entertainment. They are cute, they need protection, they are soft, and like many barnyard animals, watching their antics is better than television, says Lindsay on there. So uh, do you want entertainment from the rabbits? I'm going to put no I'm just joking. I'm gonna put to rabbit because they're they are funny. Uh, the little babies are especially funny. The way that they so when they're in the nesting box, you know, big human walks up to there to give them feed or something, and they're constantly burrowing down underneath their brothers and sisters, or you know, wiggling their way in and and uh, trying to hide all their faces. And <laughs> uh, they are cute. They're way cute. And then when they get a little bit bigger, they'll be running all around the, the pen. And some of them are out chasing mom, trying to get her to hold still long enough to try to get some milk out of her. And, and she's not having any. And it's just, it is uh, it is entertaining. All right, another, the next one is teaching opportunities. Raising rabbits is an excellent opportunity to learn about responsibility, biology, business, and more. Great for any parents to do with their children. So you can teach your children how to how to uh, take care of a, another creature, you know, some responsibility in feeding and watering. We all need food and water, and and we all poop, so that's, uh, you know, all those things are, are important. And then if they can sell them, that can be a business opportunity for them, and they can learn how to reinvest and use that money to, you know, buy more feed or, or however... You know you want to do that but that's a it's an opportunity for the kids to learn and that's very important we've definitely taken advantage of that uh, business opportunities is the next section rabbits can produce any number of business opportunities you can sell the fiber meat pelts and kits you can set up a breeding business you can show your rabbits the sky's the limit so we talked about all of those but those are uh, ways to make money so you're they can be bringing in meat and they can be bringing in uh, money and fertilizer you know and and uh, lots of other things. Rabbits are a very, very useful homesteading animal. Rabbits are prolific. This can be a good or bad thing, too. They are prolific eaters, poopers, and baby makers. You can use this to your advantage, but you will need to be prepared. So, it is important to have a hutch or a cage ready before your rabbits have babies. So, one mama rabbit, and I did a little bit of, you know, I guess you say number crunching earlier. So, one mama rabbit has, say, an average of seven kits per, per litter. And 
you don't want to breed her every so and it only takes 30 days for gestation so when she gets bred in 30 days you know, and the breeding process takes about two seconds but when she after she uh, is bred in a month she'll have babies then you wait for about a month to six weeks and then you can breed her again and by that time the babies that she had that first litter are two months old and about ready to be butchered so by the time she's having that next litter you can you can butcher the one she had before I like to let them I like to raise the rabbits a little bit more so they get a little bit bigger if you butcher them too early the meat will be soft and fall apart easy and just not a real good consistency so we like to have our rabbits be you know three or four months old rather than rather than two months old so if you can breed the mama rabbit we'll say five times a year not six because six would be every other month and she does and and some people only breed them three times a year or something like that but say if you you can breed them every other month so we'll just go for five five times so if she has an average of seven kits per litter times five that's 35 rabbits in a in a year 35 baby rabbits and when we've butchered our rabbits they've been between three and five pounds of meat every time three and five pounds uh, the carcass anyways so we'll just say that the average weight is two pounds if you want to butcher them early or something so you get two pounds of meat out of them that means that you can get 70 pounds of meat per from one breeding doe and all of her offspring will be about 70 pounds of meat then if you have three breeding does or say two breeding does that's 140 pounds three breeding does 210 pounds of white lean meat per year and it's a uh, so as i say they're very very prolific so you can have a lot of babies and then also if you had those 35 kits and you say sell them for ten dollars a piece once they're weaned that's three hundred and fifty dollars per one mama rabbit so so if you have 35 rabbits times three that's over a thousand dollars of of uh, income out of those three mama rabbits if you're selling them all that's one thousand fifty dollars if you're selling all the and the, and that's an average of seven kits uh, per litter and five litters per year now right out in our hutches right now we have one litter that has ten rabbits another one that has eight uh, uh, kits baby rabbits bunnies so you know seven I'm, I'm, I'm shooting low on seven seven rabbits for a litter and low on two pounds per meat so just to let you know the numbers are even better than that they are a better they are a better meat uh, producer than any other uh, animal I think on the farm and I'll have to do some more numbers to qualify that but I believe that that is that that is true so business opportunities and prolific opportunities and the rabbits are fragile so that is something to think about that they they if they get wet and cold then th then they'll die or if they get too hot like in the summertime if you forget to water them then they will just keel over so that might be something that uh, you need to keep track of now now that we've discovered that we want to keep rabbits because almost all of our things are two rabbit then if you've decided you want to keep rabbits then uh, if you live close to the area please consider coming out to our class here at Haven Homestead we're having our next one on the 6th of May at 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. and if you only want to be there for the rabbit care then uh, that's just from 10 to noon and then the rabbit processing is from uh, noon to 2 and if you only want to be there for for half then that's fine and and uh, we can just contact us and let us know and we'll give you uh, pricing and and directions to our our homestead but I hope this has 
helped you understand uh, or learn or discover if rabbits are for you and if you want to raise rabbits. They are cute and fluffy and delicious, but they're also rodents and smelly and and uh, some some things might turn you off that other people find desirable and and uh, and vice versa. Please comment uh, on our YouTube channel or on our uh, YouTube channel or Haven Homestead or on uh, our Facebook. I haven't mentioned that before, but Facebook we are Haven Homestead 2009. Not just ha- Haven Homestead is somebody else. And uh, so we are Haven Homestead 2009 on Facebook if you're looking us up there. This has been another episode of the Haven Homestead podcast where we learn and grow together on our way to living more sustainable lives. Thanks for listening.